Hello everyone, I will be teaching you how to relubricate the newest model of the Beaver Dam Arctic Fisherman tip-up. If you're not familiar with the Beaver Dam tip-up, their wooden tip-up originating in Wisconsin that has been made in the USA for over 60 years. They are often regarded as the smoothest and best operating tip-up on the market. Before we begin, I would just like to point out the difference between the Beaver Dam tip-ups the one here is the old version which requires a heat gun and you have to remove the solder by melting it. The newest version has this hex key hole here and we're going to show you how to relubricate and take this apart today. Before we get started I'd just like to go over the tools required for the job. The first tool we need is a 5 16 Allen wrench. For the lubricant, we're using the Beaver Dam brand non-freeze grease and it is rated to not freeze down to negative 42 degrees Fahrenheit. You'll need something to puncture a hole on the seal of the Beaver Dam grease. And the last thing is the paper towel underneath it in which we needed to clean off the old grease from the spindle. Once you have the line off your spool, you'll see the hex hole here in the center. And we're just going to take the Allen wrench, which fits into the hole, and counterclockwise twist it off until it is loose enough to remove the spool from the spindle. See here we have the spool slightly loosened. We apply some pressure. Should be it off. You'll see you have the line guide and the rubber stop. You do not need to worry about that. That just stays on the outside of the cylindrical tubing. Now on the other side of the beaver dam we have the spindle loosened so it should pull nice and easy out of the holder. I would just like to take a note that my spindle is slightly bent nearest the top. Now we'll see if I can make a small adjustment bending it. Right now I'm checking the rotation of the spool. I'm seeing less wobble in the top than I was before, which seems like I've made the necessary adjustments to straighten out the spindle, hopefully. With the spindle out again, I'm going to take the paper towel and wipe down the old grease off of here. On a careful inspection of my spindle, there does not appear to be any corrosion, so I will not need to use steel wool in the event that you do. I would just recommend wiping it across with steel wool to remove any of that corrosion. The other thing I would like to note is if there was corrosion, you can spray a brake cleaner down the top hole and hopefully remove any buildup or debris on the inside. Since mine was relatively clean, I will not be needing to do this on the step here. It appears on this container, this is plastic here, so we're gonna have to Find a way to poke through it. All right, I don't feel comfortable trying to poke this knife through here, so it looks like I'm gonna have to find some other method to open this. All right, here's what I've came up with, trying to put this nail through it. So let's see if I can do that. Getting something. As you just saw, I was taking the nail to it and I was finally able to poke a hole. As we see, there is grease coming out. Now that we have a hole punctured, we can screw back on the retaining device that concentrates the grease at the tip. Okay, now that we have the beaver dam up like this, we can start squeezing in grease into the top hole. It's coming out there. Be also a good idea to put that uh, paper towel beneath it. I'm just going to run grease through until I see something come out the bottom. Actually, I'm not going to put as much grease as I just told you. It's just enough because you got to factor in. We have this entire mechanism. As you see the spindle come back through, check if there's excess grease coming out. If there's not, that means there was not enough put in. So I'm just going to reapply a little more and I'll show you. Coming out there, there's the excess. All right, and that's what we were looking for. 
Now that the whole shaft is coated thoroughly in the grease, we can put the cap back on the grease so we're not spilling any. And then wipe off the excess on the spindle with your paper towel because this is the part that the spool connects to. You might be wondering, before you took it off, there was a little bit of play here. You do not need to worry about getting that right because the end is keyed where you reattach the spool. There you can see the keyed part of the end where you're going to reattach the spool. With the hex keyed bolt removed, you want to look at the spindle and line up where the key, as seen here, is with the spool. A helpful tip I found, see how it's dark in the center? If you rotate it, you'll be able to see it turns silver. That is the flat piece of the keyed portion. Okay, now I'm just turning the bolts back on. Holding the spool, you can check if you're inside because there will only be the slightest bit of movement of it wobbling inside the key. Once you fully tighten down the bolt, you can check by holding the spool. There is no play on the other end. Nothing is rotating around, which means the bolt is between the correct keyed position. Okay, so now we have everything reassembled. The spool is spinning how it's supposed to. And now we are done with the relubrication of the newest model of the Beaver Dam Tillips. At the time of this recording, I was unable to find a video on the lubrication of the newest model of Beaver Dams. So if you could share this with others or hit the like button to get it recommended to others, I would really appreciate that. Leave a comment on the video if this was helpful to you, and if you have other suggestions on what you would like to see next from me, I would like to hear it. Thank you for watching the video, and I hope to see you on others. You can check me out on Instagram, which is linked down below. I also have merchandise out now, which includes t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, hats, mugs, socks, and bags, backpacks, and all sorts of things. You can check that out as well as the Instagram, which are both linked in the description. I look forward to seeing you on the next video of Tankers Outdoors.